So why is zero factorial equal to one? Zero factorial is equal to one seems to defy the idea of you multiplying down until you get down to one and then you stop. I'm going to argue for this the same way I would argue for a to the power zero is equal to one. How do you argue that? You'll take it to be true, but it's the same problem. When you say a squared, we define powers as you multiply this number a by itself that number of times. So this is a times a. That makes sense to you. But the definition breaks down when you go to cases like a to the power 0 is equal to 1. So how do you argue it? 2 to the power 1 is equal to 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 cubed is equal to 8. 2 to the 4th power is equal to 16. And 2 to the 5th power is equal to 32 and so on. You are used to doing it forward. You do it forward and the numbers get bigger. Just as equally you can go backwards and then the numbers get smaller. As the power decreases you divide by 2. So 2 cubed is equal to 8 and when you divide by 2 you get that 2 squared is equal to 4. When you divide by 2 again, you get that 2 to the first power is equal to 2. And when you get to here, there is no reason to think that the pattern changes. By dividing with 2 again, we get that 2 to the power 0 is equal to 1. And as you keep going, the numbers keep making sense. So 2 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 half and 2 to the negative power of 2 is equal to 1 quarter and so on. Therefore, can you argue why 0 factorial is equal to 1? 1 factorial is equal to 1. 2 factorials we know to be equal to 2. 3 factorials is equal to 3 times 2 which is 6 and 4 factorial is equal to 24. So this time, how do I go backwards? I can divide by 4, and then I get that 3 factorial is equal to 6. If I then divide by 3, I get that 2 factorial is equal to 2. And then if I divide by 2, I get that 1 factorial is equal to 1. By dividing by 1, I get that 0 factorial is equal to 1. The reason I made a big deal out of it is because this is what makes maths interesting. Mathematics is an imagined world. That is the point of it. Mathematics can be used to do stuff and that's nice, but the point is that it doesn't matter if it can be used for something or not. The point is that it has a consistent system of rules that's meaningful. This is an amazing thing. There was this French mathematician and his name was Fourier and he discovered this. Now what is this? We have a name for it. This is a wave function. Amazing thing about this is what Fourier proved. This wave function can be made up of just a bunch of sine functions. And to be completely honest, the whole variety of them. Some of them will be big and some of them will be small. So you have to change this coefficient a at the front and you change the frequency b in the argument. And if you add enough of them together, like this, plus c times sine of dx, plus e times sine of fx, 
and so on, you can make anything. You can even make weird looking things like this. And I can make a function like that. It's a wave function. I know that it doesn't look like it, but it is. If you add up enough of wave functions, different ones, you can get to something like this. Now here is the interesting thing. What was Fourier after? He just thought that this was interesting. I wonder if you can do that. And he gave it a go and it worked. He was not at all thinking about practical applications. He was not thinking about a world of electric communications which uses this routinely. This is how your mobile phone knows how to convert the electromagnetic signals which it is receiving from the air into sounds and images. But Fourier wasn't thinking about that. He was just interested in what happens. The application came later. Almost in every field of mathematics, it is like that. Why are we working with complex numbers? They came up all the time for engineers, but that's not what the people who were thinking about them had in mind. They just thought it is interesting. So, zero factorial is equal to one makes sense just as x to the power 0 is equal to 1. Thank you for watching this video. In this video I have calculated the probability that an innocent man will be sent to jail. If you have found this video to be useful, please like, share and subscribe and leave a comment.